Hello friends, in today's video, we shall focus our attention on the work of William J. Bowmore and his unique perspective on sales revenue maximization. Bowmore's work titled Business Behavior, Value and Growth, published in 1959, presented a compelling argument. He postulated that sales revenue maximization could be an alternative and perhaps equally important goal to profit maximization. Now, why would Bowmore suggest this? Let's explore his justifications. So, the first justification is manage management incentives interestingly the salaries and extra incentives of top managers correlate more with sales than with profits as sales rise so do the benefits and earnings of the managerial team Second comes financial institutions. Banks and financiers closely monitor a firm's sales. A company with robust and growing sales often finds it easier to secure funding. Then comes employee welfare. When sales thrive, everyone in the company benefits. Employees across all levels can enjoy better salaries and improved working conditions. On the contrary, declining sales could mean cuts, layoffs and general displeasure. Then comes managerial prestige. Large and consistently growing sales boost the reputation of managers whereas significant profits primarily benefit shareholders. Then comes the consistent performance. Managers lean towards steady, reliable profits rather than chasing grand, unpredictable profit-maximizing ventures. High profits today could set unrealistic expectations for tomorrow causing potential issues in less profitable periods. And finally comes the competitive power. A firm boasting extensive escalating sales can better use competitive tactics. A diminished market share on the other hand can risk a company's competitive stance and bargaining strength against rivals. In essence, Bermuda's theory underscores the multidimensional nature of business goals. While profits are crucial, sales and the countless benefits they bring to various stakeholders cannot be understated. Let's now explore Bermuda's static models focusing on the single product model both with and without advertising expenditure. First of all, let's look into the model without advertising. Let's begin by laying out the basic assumptions of model 1. So the first assumption is time horizon. The firm operates within a single time period and in this duration it seeks to maximize its total sales revenue without giving attention to future implications. The second assumption is about the profit constraint. The firm is bound by an externally set minimum level of profit influenced by shareholders' demands, banks and financial institutions. and the third assumption is about market dynamics the demand curve for the firm is downward sloping while cost curves take a u shape in this diagram the total cost and the total revenue curves are given the total sales revenue is at its maximum at the highest point of the tr curve where the slope of the total revenue curve which is the marginal revenue is equal to 0 the total profit curve is represented by pi the central objective maximize sales revenue but always within the boundaries of a minimum minimum profit why well if profits fall below this minimum acceptable level shareholders might get nervous potentially causing stock prices to fall this can threaten management's job security in short the firm tries to maximize the total sales revenue subject to a minimum profit constraint which is determined exogenously in this model the profit curve has an inverted u shape while traditional models suggest firms stop at the point where the profit is at its maximum bowmore suggests that firms might continue increasing sales even if it results in reduced profits provided they stay above a certain minimum threshold that is why initially as sales increase profits also increases and reaches its maximum after which the profits starts to decline even if sales continue to rise This decline in profits happened because after a certain level increasing sales often comes with higher costs like wage pressures less favorable locations for expansion diminishing returns to their input factors etc the profit curve therefore will initially rise and then fall giving it somewhat an inverted u shape the peak of this curve signifies the point where profits are maximized now with bowmore's model there are specific operational outcomes if our firm was solely profit driven the output would be at level x pi m however in bowmore's view the firm is primarily sales maximizer and must also meet shareholders' profit expectations for instance if the minimum acceptable level of profit is pi bar 1 the firm will aim for x s m output level maximizing sales revenue that is the total revenue profits in this scenario which is pi s m is greater than the set minimum profit expectation level which is pi bar 
bar 1. In this situation, it can be said that the minimum profit constraint pi bar 1 is not operative because clearly the actual profits is greater than the minimum profits earned. So, it nullifies the profit constraint. However, if the minimum profit expectation is raised to pi bar 2, maximizing sales revenue becomes a challenge. Here, the profit constraint pi bar 2 becomes operative making the firm produce XS output which is less than the ideal XSM level. In essence, when no advertising is involved and a strict profit constraint is imposed which here is pi bar 2, a sales maximizer will produce more output at a lower price for obvious reason that is to increase the sales compared to a profit maximizer who will produce less output at a higher price. Bowmall's model thus opens our eyes to the dynamic interaction of sales and profits in shaping a firm's strategic direction. Let us now see the same explanation with the marginal cost and marginal revenue curves. In this diagram, on the x-axis, we have quantity of the output sold and on y-axis, we have the price per unit. The market structure can either be monopoly or monopolistic competition as there is some degree of market power due to which the demand curve or the price line slopes downwards and an MR curve lies below it. A profit maximizing firm will be in equilibrium at point E where MC equals MR. Here, the output level stands at OX1 with a price of OP1. At this stage, our firm enjoys a supernormal profit visualized by the area P1ABC with a total cost being OCBX1. But what about a sales maximizing firm? This firm will produce till point OX2 where MR equals to 0 and at this point, the total revenue will be at its maximum. Maximum. This increased output comes at a price of OP2. While the firm still pockets a supernormal profit represented by the area P2DFG, its total cost stands at OGFX2. The interesting observation here, even though the sales maximizing firm makes a relatively lower profit than its profit maximizing counterpart, it produces a greater quantity of output and importantly at a reduced price. This strategy ensures that their total sales revenue covers that of a strict profit maximizer. If you like the video, do subscribe to my channel and share the video with your friends. Thank you.